With Oasis constantly grabbing headlines since the band's announcement it would be heading on a reunion tour next summer in the UK, some reports have suggested the Gallagher brothers might agree to perform at Glastonbury. Could the over 200,000 festival goers be lucky enough to witness Liam and Noel perform at the event for the first time since 2004? This clip of Matty Healy from the 1975 went viral last year of the frontman urging the brothers to put their differences aside and headline the big event. What are Oasis doing? Can you imagine being in potentially right now still the coolest band in the world and not doing it because you're in a mod with your brother? Do you know what I mean? I can deal with them dressing like they're in their 20s and being in their 50s, but acting like they're in their 20s, they need to grow up. Stop marding. They're like men of the people. And they're sat around in like Little Venice and Highgate, like crying over an argument with their brother. Grow up, headline Glastonbury. There is not one person going to a High Flying Birds gig or a Liam Gallagher gig that would not rather be at an Oasis gig. There is not one person that's there going, you know what? I loved Definitely Maybe, but my favourite thing is f***ing Noel Gallagher's high fly. Do, do me a favour, get back together, stop messing around. That's my public service announcement for today. So is this just a pipe dream or is Oasis perhaps thinking about it? Nick Riley from Rolling Stone magazine joins me now. Nick, what do you think about these rumours? Well, I think first and foremost, it's the fact that they've put out a statement saying that it's not going to happen. Um, categorically, they have put out that statement. Um, and so that's obviously as crystal clear as it gets. And they said this before the uh, before the tickets went on sale. And I think they did that because there was, I guess, a fair amount of fans that would be going to Glastonbury that would perhaps otherwise hold off on buying tickets because then they were in the hope of being like, right, okay, I'll wait till Dastonbury. And I guess they didn't want those fans to be disappointed. So they made a point of saying that before they uh, put the tickets on sale. Um, but also, interestingly, um, there has been the issues of fees. Um, I mean, it remains to be seen whether they ever spoke to Glastonbury, but it has been noted that Glastonbury is known for paying headline artists a little bit less than other festivals. Um, partly for the fact that it's largely a charitable endeavour. A lot of their money that they make goes back to charity. And also it's kind of the prestige of playing Glastonbury as well. Yeah, I wonder, Nick, why the two brothers wouldn't do Glastonbury when it's such a critically acclaimed festival for any artist to perform at. It totally, um, it totally is. But I guess if you wanted it for the money, as I said, um, I think that's the kind of issue there. Um, and I mean, I haven't looked at the schedule, but I guess there's every chance that some of the dates would clash. There's other opportunities that might come to them. And yeah, they, they did it before in 2004. And it was seen as one of Oasis's weaker performances at that time. Um, a lot of people criticised Liam's voice and they haven't quite ever cracked that nut of Worthy Farm. So perhaps they're thinking now, look, we're a bit too long in the tooth. We don't need to go and prove ourselves at this festival. We don't need to do this. We haven't got the best history there. And um, as a band, Noel's played it plenty of times as a solo artist, but as a band, you know, Oasis and Glastonbury were never the kind of most obvious and the most successful of pairings. So perhaps there's a little bit of that as well. With Oasis announcing their reunion tour for next summer in the UK, the momentum was insane and the tickets were obviously highly sought after. I think there was like 10 million people wanting 1 million worth of tickets, but there's now rumours swirling and on Reddit accounts that claim that the brothers are planning to announce a US leg soon. Have you heard anything on that front? Yeah, I've seen that leak um, and I can't comment on um, if it's the same one that a lot of those fans are talking about. I can't comment on the veracity of it. Um, but if there's anything near to what it is, it's certainly ambitious um, because Oasis were never a stadium band in the US. I think they played Madison Square Garden, which obviously, though an iconic venue, is ultimately um, an arena with a capacity of less than 30,000. It's not a stadium. Um, and some of these dates that have been bandied in the air were stadiums, which kind of makes me a little bit sceptical and just think it's someone playing around. Um, but certainly, irrespective of size, I think we can expect them uh, to be over there. They have said that the tour will go to that part of the um, part of the world later in 2025 once the UK and Ireland shows are done with 
Um, so yeah, I think that you know Oasis fans in America can definitely see them, but it remains to be seen quite on what size. Um, I don't think it necessarily will be all stadiums. I think there'll be a few arenas in there as well. It might be the odd stadium, but yeah, um, I think they'll definitely be coming. But what it is and how it kind of presents itself remains to be seen. Nick, an unsurprising report from The Sun stated that Apple TV bosses were vying to produce a documentary of Oasis in the run-up to their tour next year, similar to what The Beatles did. But what do you think about that? To be honest, I, yeah, I saw that story and that was the first I've heard of it myself. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if something like that is in the works. I mean, it goes to say, you know, we look at the how quickly the tickets sold out, the sheer appetite among their fans and the fact it's a historic event. Um, and more so than that, it's the story of these two warring brothers who have put their differences aside for the greater good of the band that they created that united the country. So I think there's an amazing story there to be told. So I think it's totally natural that there must be something in the works. Um, whoever has got it, I think there will be one hell of a bidding war. It's an incredible story, whether that's Netflix, whether it's Apple. Um, so, yeah, I think it remains to be seen. But, yeah, of course, there, there must be a film. And I think it's what the fans deserve as well, those kind of little behind-the-scenes moments of exactly what the relationship between Liam and Noel is going to look like in the run-up to those shows. Over the weekend, Nick, Liam Gallagher was hit with some controversial opinions over his performance at the boxing. What did you make of his performance? Um, I think a lot of those people are talking out their trousers. I think there's not one person out there, if you sat in that queue, if you've got Oasis tickets, that you're going to give that up. It's just not going to happen. Um, and in fairness, I think a lot of those comments were in jest. Um, but from where I was looking into all that performance online, I think Liam has sounded, as a solo artist, as good as he's ever done. Um, the last time I spoke to you, Maddie, we were talking about the fact that um, he headlined Reading Festival only the weekend before it was announced. And the videos and footage that came out there, he sounds like an incredible sort of performance. I think his voice has sounded the best as in years. Um, and this isn't me saying it as an Oasis devotee. I genuinely think it's the way it is. And I think there has always been a slight unpolished, a certain gruffness. But that's part of all the appeal to Liam's voice. And that is Liam being Liam. Um, and I think if people haven't realised that by now, then... Where have you been all the last 30 years? Because I think his voice has always been a little bit like, like that. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's a cause for concern. I think it was all storming a teacup. Um, and it, as Liam said himself, he responded, um, I mean, in more explicit terms than these, but basically saying, look, if you saw it, you don't like it, give up your tickets, we'll happily have them back, which I think nicely settles that one. Do you think that the Gallagher brothers still have the talent and the agility to be able to perform these big shows next year? Or should fans be worried that they could be subjected to a similar show to those early 2000s when people thought Oasis wasn't in their prime? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think it is a concern because I think, yeah, you raise a fair point and there was those kind of things of in the latter half and the late 2000s before they split up, the complaint that they were going through the motions, it looked like they were there to perhaps take the money. And at that point, we didn't realise quite how relations between Lim and Noel were at breaking point. And obviously, it was that famous um, bust up backstage at Rock on Sen that was the straw that broke Oasis's back, really. So I think, you know, when you're in a situation that you don't want to be in, um, it's natural that perhaps you're not going to put your heart in it. And I think for those shows, perhaps, that was what was coming across. But the fact is now, after 15 years, they've kind of buried the hatchet. They are back. They want to do these shows because I think it's a massive money spinner. Um, but the fact that as solo artists, they've gone and done amazing things. They've both proved vocally and performance-wise they are at the top of their games. So I think that isn't a concern. And I think if all goes well, we could, you know, be seeing some of the best Oasis shows possible. Radio.